ओके चिन्मय Hi all, my name is Chinmay Patil, and I welcome you all on the behalf of Hotwax Developer Network. Today we will be having a brand new session on the Mocky Services at Attributes. So first thing first, this session would be a in-depth session on how to implement the inline services in Mocky using XML action elements. To have a better understanding of uh, logic and services in Mocky, I would recommend you to visit the session four. of this webinar series which covers the introduction to the logics and services so today uh, we will be having an end up uh, session on the how to implement the inline services in mocky so i have just started the presentation of my screen as well so in the mocky documentation available on the uh, mocky.org so we can fi find the section of uh, logic and services in which uh, uh, in which are detailed sections uh, each detailed section is available so we will be starting with the service definition here uh, one of the good example which is uh, already demonstrated here is for the service an inline service of create person so we will uh, in today's session we will be mostly be uh, seeing all the uh, services uh, in the action so i will quickly jump to the implementation part as well so first of all taking the first example which is already available so here one of the service which is uh, illustrated is of the create person here you can see that Uh, the in parameters and out parameters are defined so i will quickly go go through it that uh, in in parameters the auto parameters are actually uh, of of the entity parties are already uh, declared and similarly for the person the interesting thing to see here is that the uh, one of the tag which is of include which which says the non primary keys so the only the non primary key attributes uh, parameters of the person entity would be actually included in the n parameters and the other required parameter is of first name and last name and the role type id is optional and this service actually uh, only returns one of the out parameter which is the party id the interesting thing would be uh, seeing the the definition of the service which is actually uh, which is actually uh, is the part of the actions uh, actions attribute here you we can see uh, that two service calls have been made and uh, one one more another service call is made which is conditional uh, the important thing to look here is that the out parameter which was defined uh, which is the party id nowhere it was set in uh, no where the value of this party id is set so then this is the uh, we can say the magic of mocky that uh, no no need there is no need to actually uh, set the values by because the service facade uh, actually takes that value from the uh, the context so that's something which we can find here that uh, there is no need to exploit explicitly set uh, set the party id output parameter because the service facade automatically picks up the context value for each declared output parameter uh, when the service implementation is run so this is something i can say that uh, in a very less line of codes a, a great example of a, sim, a, a very good service is actually demonstrated here so uh, rest of the sections uh, the introductions as i said that they are covered in the session 4 so we will be directly jumping on to the overviews of the xml actions so in this section uh, a lot of uh, most frequently used action element element ac uh, xml action elements are uh, listed here uh, which are uh, which we can say that uh, can cover a a lot of uh, implementation of the services in inline services in the mock so we'll directly jump into seeing the uh, these elements in action 
so here is one of the example of a very simple service which is implemented but it contains a lot of information which we can will dig into now so here is one of the example of create shipment service and uh, directly we will be jumping into the n parameters as i said earlier that uh, for, we can define uh, auto parameters for any of the entities and the default val default value of include is all and uh, you can explicitly uh, define that which parameters should be actually included so here for shipment item entity the non parameter uh, the non primary keys are actually included also you can define the default values of the parameters if not passed and as well as you can define the types of the parameters as well similarly uh, the example which we have seen here also this shipment item source id is one of the output parameter which you won't be finding uh, the uh, the value is being explicitly set for this parameter and in this service uh, we have sent we have uh, made a and uh, a query into the entity shipment item so here is one of the example of how to actually uh, fetch the records from any of the entities so with the entity find one we are saying that uh, the query would be made with the primary keys of this entity and uh, the value uh, of the records being fetched would be stored in the shipment item in this we can see that uh, the field maps are given so in the entity find one element field maps actually uh, actually tells the service that what would be the primary keys so here the shipment id and the product id would be used which are actually the required parameters for the service uh, they would be used to fetch the record of shipment item and then uh we have a condition here where it says that if the uh, if the shipment item is not equal to null then this section would be actually uh would be uh, initiated and uh, on the on the basis of condition uh, the sec the other section of the service are uh, are actually executed so here we can see that if we find the shipment item then we will be uh, this section would be getting uh, executed and uh, here is one of the example of how to set the uh, values of any of the variable so for that we use a set element which is provided and uh, we actually uh, with the field we actually uh, declare the that which variable we need to initiate and from which value so here we can see that one of the operation is also uh, is being executed like from the shipment item uh, dot quantity uh, we will be adding the quantities uh, parameter which we uh, which we get from the n parameters and the another line is of entity update so this element is actually used for uh, updating the uh, record the entity record so we can see that uh, we actually fetched this value the entity record here and then we have uh, set one of the field of that entity record and then we have simply uh, updated the value with using the entity update so this is something uh, we can see that the power of uh, uh, of the xml action elements where we with the simple tags you can actually perform a lot of uh, big tasks similarly uh, continuing with the execution of the service the, if this condition is not met then we will be simply going to the else section of the service and here the shipment item uh, for creating a shipment item a service call is made so this is an inline service call and uh, we will also we will also cover the inline services call and wrapper services in one of our upcoming session so i will simply uh, skip the in depth the uh, intro to this and uh, yeah continuing with the execution we will we have simply set the one of the field of quantity not handled which is a part of the shipment item resource entity 
and uh, there is one more example of one more operation being performed which is a ternary uh, here we have used a ternary operator and we are setting the value of quantity not handled fee and we have made a call to the service uh, to the service which is create shipment item resource and uh, to make a service call i would uh, quickly uh, illustrate that how a service call is made so we we'll, we actually define the uh, we actually tell the name of the service which we are going to execute and the in map would be the context and out map would be also a context so actually uh, by declaring it in this way so here the service facade uh, actually uh, get to know that which uh, with the in uh, in parameter as the context uh, service facade would uh, would actually fetch the appropriate uh, in parameters of this service from the context object as itself so again no need to actually uh, declare or prepare a map of the in parameters for this service I, uh, the service facade object uh, would uh, would directly uh, pick the appropriate parameters for the service if we have uh, defined it if we have declared it this way so this is one of the example of a very uh, simple service but containing a lot of uh, uh, xml ele action elements but we can uh, see that uh, if we are actually they are actually a simple english words and already uh, we can say that by seeing only the element names we can actually get to know that what they will be actually doing we can also uh, moving to a next example so as i said that uh, i will be covering the most frequently used action elements which are listed here so i have taken the examples of the services which are already there in the mocky uh, to demonstrate them so now let's go ahead and uh, see that one of the usage of uh, the set and return here again uh, the in parameters are defined for the services and you can see that there is no out parameter so this is also possible that service would be actually making uh, would be making a few executions and actually the service do not return any of the parameters so that's also possible so the first line itself gives a example of uh, return being used so here we have checked with the condition that whether the user ids and the party id both are not uh, if if both are not present then will be the service would be simply returning a uh, return statement is uh, actually implemented here so the service would be actually returning a, a message uh, which tells the exact error which happened and we also set the value of error being true so uh, so that the execution the further execution would get to know that uh, error happened here so yes this is one of the example of uh, how to actually return uh, uh, error from the service itself uh, the next usage would be for the setting of one of the variables so there can be a lot of uh, ways we can do uh, simply setting of the a uh, variable from another well variable other example could be a setting of uh, a value into this variable so here uh, it would be interesting to see that how this is implemented so we can see the user account list is actually uh, of type list uh, this illustrates uh, a check whether the value exists or not and from that we have fetched the first record and in that you uh, you would be finding the user id variable which would be a string for uh, in this case so out of a list and then a uh, the first uh, object of that list and of uh, out of it the, for, uh, the this variable is actually fetched and its value is set into this field so we can see that uh, with a very simple uh, implementation uh, the the power of moki is actually demonstrated here that how the values are get set so easily here so yeah that's it from uh, this example 
let's move ahead with the, another example where we'll be seeing, seeing the traitor being in action and a service call as well. So here, here is one of the service which is for deleting the variant products. And uh, here we can see that uh, we can, in the action element, we, we have seen, uh, we can see that one of the entity find is, uh, is being, uh, has been implemented. So let's cover that as well here only. With the entity find, we'll be actually uh, querying into the one of the entities using the non-primary keys or a set of primary and non-primary keys. So here, uh, the format is of uh, defining an entity find element with the entity name in which we will be uh, uh, making the query. And this actually represents the output. Uh, so the SOC list would be containing the uh, records being fetched with this query. And uh, the entity condition and with the field name, you actually define that uh, what, what uh, fields we need to query with. So here the product ID is used. And similarly, the product SOC type in ID is also used. So yeah, jumping into the iterator. So here, uh, if we want to actually iterate uh, a list which we have, so here we can see the SOC list has been, uh, we have just fetched it and we have iterated here. And the entry element actually tells the, well, uh, the value which we can use in this iteration for one of the records. So like if there, there would be three, uh, uh, three maps in this list and the with each iteration, this this could be used for uh, fetching the maps. So we can see that, and also uh, example of a service call in the iteration. So here, for each iteration, the service call would be made of uh, deleting the product. And here we can see that uh, the map, the iteration map, is used for the in parameters. Like for the product ID, we can we have the a soft map, and we will be fetching the two product ID from it to initiate the product ID variable. And so, yeah, this is one of the example where in the uh, multiple iterations, a service call is being made. So these are some, uh, these are a few of the uh, examples we get directly from, uh, which are already implemented in, and uh, you can see a lot of usage of, a lot of usage of such kind of, uh, of various kind of uh, XML elements. So uh, I have covered a few of the, from this, like the, how to set a field name and uh, the conditional uh, executions using the if element. Uh, similarly, a while element is also there. And uh, we have already seen the, how to iterate a list. And uh, we'll be covering this in, in the, in, in few minutes. Uh, we have also seen the service call how to make a service call using the service call element. And we have seen the entity find one and the entity find as well. Similarly, you can uh, use the entity find count element to find the count of the number of records which actually matches with the condition. And uh, there are a few others, which are the entity make value, entity create and update. We have seen one of the usage of the entity update. Uh, I would say that uh, not to use the entity create or update directly uh, rather than using the CRUD services for them available because uh, there can be a lot of CKAs which which actually get triggered. So using the services, I would say it would be a, a better approach and a good practice in Mocky. But yeah, it will surely depend on the usage being uh, implemented. So yeah, these are also available. So jumping next to one of the complex ones, which is the entity sequenced ID primary. We'll be seeing this with the help of one of the uh, already implemented service. So we can see that uh, the service is actually of cloning the product. And uh, we'll directly jump into the usage of this element. So for that, we'll, uh, we'll be covering the one of the implementation first. Like in the action stack, uh, we see that the product uh, entity record is being fetched. And then we are seeing that uh, we have used the entity set 
So with this, we say that uh, only to include the non-primary keys of the product entity into the value field of product. So actually here, the product was having the map, which was having all the primary key and non-primary key fields from the product entity. And here we have defined that only to include the non-primary keys in the same map. Then will be we have set the value of the product, uh, this the product ID field of the product map we are having to null. And uh, also similarly, this is done for the pseudo ID as well. And then we have used the entity sequence ID ID primary for the value field of product. So what we will uh, to have an in-depth uh, description of this. Uh, I would say to actually let's jump into the uh, the accessibility of this and uh, in the in the earlier section uh, we have demonstrated how to actually configure uh, the accessibility as well. So by simply uh, hovering it, you would be seeing that it would be actually uh, referring to the accessibility where we can find uh, a more in depth knowledge about this. So I'm clicking it. So it will directly jump into the accessibility file and uh, here is the how here is the more in-depth details of the this element so here we can see that uh, to get the next guaranteed unique set uh, unique sequence ID for this entity we can use this element and to set it in the primary this is only used for the primary key field so uh, here one of uh, one more thing is mentioned that to use it uh, for the entities which are having only one primary key field. So we can say that it's, it's a constraint here. So the entities which are having only one primary key field, for this we can use the entity sequence ID primary. So it will actually uh, generate the next, uh, uh, next valid sequence ID. Uh, so uh, most of you are, you would be aware that uh, each entity can the primary keys are actually auto generated the uh, value of them so with this we we can find the next uh, valid sequence id of the value field and uh, yeah continuing the execution we would see that uh, the entity create is being used here and uh, so actually uh, what this service is actually doing is we have actually fetched one of the product entity record we have set the non-primary key fields here with using this uh, st uh, statement of uh, line statement. And uh, we have made the product ID as null because this is a new one which would be generated uh, using this line statement. And we have created one of the entity record using the entity create here. So this would be actually cloning one of the existing product. Uh, Sim it will be simply cloning the value of one of the existing product record. So yeah, this is a, um, again, we can see that with the simple usage of uh, elements, we can see that uh, how big task and operation actual are actually performed. Let's jump into the one of other example as well. Here we will be seeing that uh, uh, how to have uh, object types as a parameters. So this is something uh, a customized uh, service which we I have implemented. I won't be saying that it would be a, a good example to actually implement, but uh, yeah, uh, to have to demo the usage of uh, object type of uh, parameter, I have implemented it. So here uh, with the example component, I am actually fetching the example items entity oh. records. And as you can see that in the out parameters, I, I have prepared a, a parameter which is which is of type list. And I have also defined the structure of this list uh, using this line of statements. So here we can see that uh, this list uh, parameter would be having a map inside it. And we can also uh, declare that how, how uh, what, what would be the variables would be which are actually uh, would be available as out parameter in this map. So this is uh, more towards uh, for this pattern should be I think in uh, the approach would should be uh, that 
if we want to make a more in-depth uh, uh, service declaration so for that we can uh, use this approach otherwise simply giving the uh, out parameters as a as a parameter as a type of list that would also would have worked here but to give a better look at uh, what would be the out parameters which would be available uh, this this can be used so yeah uh, also we will be seeing the filter map list and order map list as well but before that let's move into the uh, the entity find query as well here because we are having few of the other uh, usage of other elements as well so yeah uh, in parameters is actually an example id which is a required parameter and the out parameters are uh, defined here so yeah jumping to the action element we have made a query to the example item entity and uh, we can see that the uh, records being fetched the result would be stored here uh, i have made an entity condition that with the example id you you will be actually this would be used for the uh, this query and i have also defined the uh, fields i need to actually select with this query and there can also be the order by that uh, that actually uh, tells that after the query how to uh, with which fields we need to order by the results which we fetch so yeah let's uh, jump into the execution of this so i have come to the uh, service reference section in the mocky and uh, i'll be fetching uh, service here and uh, by simply uh, selecting to run the service i am here and uh, here is one of the example id i am having and uh, by executing it i would be seeing the result so here i am having a list of uh, maps which are actually returned and you can see that uh, they will be actually uh, assemble with the out parameters which i have defined and as i have set selected fields here so only these fields would be actually getting listed in this so and as you can see that i have ordered by with the example item sequence id so that's also uh, working here and uh, i have simply set the field from this so this is not a uh, simply declaring the uh, variable as example item list would have worked here but to demonstrate a further example i am doing this so yeah let's see the filter of uh, filtering of the map lists as well so yeah uh, here is one more uh, element which we can use so with this we will be filtering the existing list on the basis of the uh, one of the field uh, field name which is being contained in this list so you can see that uh, the filter map list actually uh, uh, we can go to the xsd of this and we can see that this element is used to filter the given list of maps by the field maps being specified in it so yeah uh, let's see it in action so as you can see that uh, we were having the example uh, example item list containing this and uh, let's filter the records by setting the field map so i have set here that that the amount uh, with the, the amount fields which are actually null should get filtered so let's see this so yes we can see that uh, out of the two records now only one is being returned and uh, here the amount is actually null so with with uh, with this setting up of uh, field map we can filter any existing list uh, and can return also i have also there is one more thing that uh, how to order a list uh, by the by using the order map list element so here uh, it takes the list of to which uh, we are actually need to order and the field name uh, with which we want to order by so uh, let's just uh, see the order map list as well 
I will comment this and uh, see that uh, the order by is being done by the field name. And let's reverse this. So, okay, yeah, you can see that uh, the the records are getting ordered by with the example item sequence ID now. So these are the few elements, uh, XML elements, which are actually present here out of the box in the Mocky. And we can see that a uh, great usage uh, for which uh, if we would be writing it in Groovy or, uh, or in Java, it would be taking a more complex uh, line and it would be a more complex approach and would be taking a lot more uh, number of lines uh, rather than when compared to this XML action elements which are present there. And uh, with uh, there is one of the best practice which I can say. Uh, I haven't found the doc document related to it, so I am covering it here. So as you can see that uh, there is also a script tag, a script element which is available. So this is used uh, when we want to actually in the inline services if we want to have a, a groovy code here. So for that, uh, we use the script tag, a script element. And uh, in this example, I have uh, I would be covering a best practice to follow, which I, I have find that uh, uh, as, as I have said that uh, the service for, uh, for chart actually filter out the out parameter from the service execution. So to make the things uh, lighter during the execution and to have a faster execution, uh, there, there can be a number of variables which we, we would be defining and declaring. So it will take uh, a lot more time for the service facade to filter out the out parameters. So a better approach would be to uh, define the, uh, these variables using the def keyword. So what actually would happen here is that uh, uh, the scope of this variable would be local only so that uh, it won't be a global variable and won't be available to the context. So uh, to demonstrate it, let's have an example of it. Uh, there is my, uh, I have already find, uh, actually find out the service which I would be uh, using here. So it is the get enums by type for dropdown. So this is the service and uh, uh, let's see what I'm actually referring to. So I have added two logs here. So yeah, uh, I haven't covered that earlier. So let's see that here is also the example of how to add the logs to the server, uh, server logs. So here log element actually has uh, the level attribute and uh, it would be having different values like info, warning, debugging, error, and some other. So let's do the warning here. And you can add the message. So uh, in the logs, what you want to actually uh, tip, uh, you want to actually list down. So depicting it would be done using this. And you can see that I have uh, uh, this is a this would be a simple string and this is one of the variable so yeah this is for the log and let's move back to the exa uh, example what i am sharing is here you can see that uh, i have defined the enum entry as a a local variable in the enum and uh, uh, enum list is something which is actually uh, a list of which we have uh, fetched here. So yeah, let's see here that in the script tag, we have uh, defined it using the def keyword. And uh, here I have printed the uh, variables, the result list and the enum entry, uh, which are available in context. So when I actually done that, we can see that uh, the context.result list actually gives me um, the record of the result list variable. So we can say that the result list was actually present in the context because this was defined as a global variable. And we can see the enum entry is actually uh, not, is actually null. So this is something uh, I would say, uh, I would recommend to use that the variables which we are not 
uh, going to which we are using for the local scope only for the executions uh, for making the executions uh, should be defined using the def keyword in the script tag and uh, so that uh, it would it would reduce the execution time for the uh, service for count so i hope this is uh, clear here and uh, yeah that's uh, i think uh, that would be all from my side regarding the uh, uh, regarding the xml actions element sent to the seeing the live demo for it uh, so yeah if there are any questions we can go ahead with it or if you are having uh, if you want to discuss any element then we can also cover it Yes, Pranay. Uh, I think that's it from my side. Yeah, well, uh, thank you so much, Chinmay. Uh, definitely, it was a helpful session. And as we already know that there are uh, other topics that we are going to cover in upcoming sessions on services only. Uh, so I hope right. if there are any questions, we can definitely discuss in the uh, future sessions as well. Sure. Okay. So thank you so much uh, for this fruitful session. And uh, thanks to all the participants as well for sparing their time this morning. Thank you so much. Have a good day. And please take care. Thanks, Dean.